Hello, everyone. I'm John Vasilakis from Condeva Drug Delivery, and today I'm going to talk to you about cancer vaccine delivery by precise intradermal administration. Financial disclosure, I am an employee of Condeva Drug Delivery. In general, vaccines are solutions that contain immunogenic material that are injected using a conventional needle and syringe by the IM or sub-Q route. Now, the components may vary. They could be antigens, proteins, cells, viruses, but they are generally solutions that are injected IM using conventional needle and syringe. Now, there are devices that have been developed and that are currently being developed that can precisely and accurately administer a vaccine into the skin. Some examples are shown here. So one of the problems with the conventional needle and syringe for intradermal administration is volume that can be administered. Typically, with a standard needle and syringe, we're talking about 50 to 100 microliters. When most vaccines are one to two mils. So think about the process of vaccination as really containing three pillars. You have the vaccine itself, and you have the delivery system, and you have the route of administration. Now, there is rationale for delivering a vaccine into the skin. The skin is an immune-rich organ. It contains various types of antigen-presenting cells. And in general, the skin is made up of two layers, an epidermis and a dermis. The dermis is approximately 90% of the skin. And then within the dermis, there's a large variety of antigen-presenting cells. When those dendritic cells pick up the antigen and become activated, they drain to the local lymph node and they induce an adaptive immune response. In addition, there's data to show that intradermal vaccination with cancer vaccines can induce class one restricted CDA responses and TH1 like immune responses, the type of immune responses that you would want with a cancer vaccine. One thing I didn't point out on the previous slide in regard to conventional needle and syringe administration into the skin, the skin is about one and a half to two millimeters thick. So in addition to only being able to accept a small volume of fluid when administered with a conventional needle and syringe, the technique of actually injecting requires some training. And even with the training, the administrations are not always accurate or precise. So in order to accurately and precisely administer a vaccine to the skin, Devices have been developed and are currently in development that can do so. And I showed you an example of some of those devices on an earlier slide. And on this particular slide, there's a device called HMTS, or Hollow Microneedle Transdermal System that, was, that has been developed by Condeva Drug Delivery. This particular device is currently in clinical testing, specifically cancer vaccines, and I'm gonna show you some of that data in a moment. Key features of the device are shown on the slide. Now the device is, contains a cartridge that is filled with a vaccine. That cartridge is then inserted into the injector. The injector is then placed on the skin, a button is pressed, and the vaccine is administered into the skin. This particular device um, can administer volumes of 0.5 to 2 mLs. Remember I told you before that most vaccines are a mil to a mil and a half. The, the key, uh, one of the most important parts of the device is the array, which contains the microneedles. It is 10 centimeters squared. Each needle is 1,500 microns in length. And the lumen or the opening of the microneedles are 80 microns. Now, the 1,500 microneedle length is important because this indicates that the vaccine will be administered about 800 microns deep, which is in, in the dermis, in the APC-rich region of the skin. And the 80 micron lumen 
um, is large enough that it'll allow cells and large particles to flow through the microneedles and into the skin. A number of animal studies have been done to demonstrate the functionality of the HMTS device. On this particular slide, you're looking at a pig study that demonstrates reproducible depth of penetration and consistent fluid delivery. In this particular study, there were 58 HMTS injector deliveries of a 1 ml solution into pigs, into the ham region of pigs. And the key findings on the slide show that the depth of penetration is consistently around 800 microns deep. Again, this would be the depth that would put the vaccine in the dermal space of the skin. And that 98% of these 1 ml administrations were administered within 10 minutes. Now, in general, most of these administrations were in less than two minutes. Functionality of the HMTS device was also evaluated in humans. On this particular slide, you're looking at delivery time per injection site. The Mayo Clinic is currently running an autologous DC vaccine. So in preparation for the study, 1 ml injections were administered to three sites on 19 human patients. The sites were abdomen, thigh, and upper arm. The data on the slide show that 91% of the administrations occurred under five minutes. In, in actually, the majority of the injections occurred in less than two minutes. These data are consistent with the swine data that I showed you on the previous slide. Two cancer vaccine studies have been conducted using Candevis HMTS device. The first one I'm going to talk about is from the Mayo Clinic, and this is an DC vaccine study in glioblastoma patients. The patients were diagnosed with glioblastoma. They underwent surgery, followed by radiation, and then they went on DC plus TMZ therapy. The vaccine was administered Initially, every other day, five administrations in the presence of TMZ, and thereafter, it was given monthly with TMZ. This study is still active. The DC vaccine is characterized as CD83, CD80, CD86, and HLA-DR high. One ml of the dendritic cell vaccine was administered with the HMTS unit into 20 GBM patients. The delivery sites were abdomen, thigh, and upper arm. On the far right-hand side of the slide, you're looking at the AEs that were reported in the study. The, the investigators at the Mayo Clinic indicated that the majority of these AEs were due to the TMZ therapy, not due to the dendritic cell therapy. And in fact, that the DC were considered to be well-tolerated. On this slide, Survival post-surgery is indicated. The green bars indicate the number of days that the patients are on trial, and the red bars indicate the progression, and these patients were removed from the trial. And the blue bars indicate that the patients had completed all 15 vaccinations and continue off trial but are progression-free. And the X's indicate that the patients had died. The key finding from this particular data, even though it's only 20 patients, that these patients, all of the patients on the study had survived at least one year following surgery. Importantly, immune monitoring was performed in the study. And here, you're looking at flow cytometric analysis data, specifically class one restricted CD8 response, antigen specific response in healthy volunteer versus GBM patients that were treated with a DC vaccination. There are 10 healthy volunteers compared to 19 GBM patients. And the data demonstrate that there's very little response in the healthy volunteers, less than 1% of, of antigen-specific CD8s, in comparison to 13% in the GBM patient. Again, this is a representative example, and there are a small number of patients, but nonetheless, the data are encouraging and that they indicate that the vaccine therapy actually induces the type of response that, that you would want in having an effective cancer vaccine. So the key conclusions from the Mayo study indicate the 
feasibility of the intradermal vaccination approach was established in 100% of the patients in the study. The therapy gave an excellent safety profile and that even though there are only 20 patients that were evaluated, that efficacy appears promising in that 100% of the patients were alive at one year post-surgery. And again, importantly, the immune, the immune monitoring data demonstrate an increase in class one restricted CD8 responses. Another study I wanna talk about was performed by Sensei Biotherapeutics. It's a phase one trial using the vaccine PAN301 or SNS301 in biochemically relapsed prostate cancer patients. This study has been completed. This, this study was a, a traditional open label three by three dose escalation study, three doses of PAN301. The vaccine is a bacteriophage that expresses a cancer, a domain of a cancer antigen called ASPH or humanospartyl beta hydroxylase. Um, at the time of enrollment, these, there, were, there were 12 prostate cancer patients with BCR after prostatectomy. They either received or did not receive radiation therapy, and there was no sign of metastases. The cancer vaccine SNS301 is characterized as an inactivated bacteriophage. It expresses ASPH or a domain of ASPH fused to native bacteriophage glycoprotein D. The, this particular vaccine is considered to be innately immunogenic and the vaccine formulation does not contain any added adjuvant. Interestingly, this vaccine was designed to induce both a B cell and a T cell response. Similar to the Mayo study, the vaccine was administered intradermally with HMTS device and one ML volume. Key findings from Sensei's SNS 301 phase one study are shown on this slide. So safety and tolerability were established. Safety data on all three of the cohorts was shown, and importantly, the recommended phase two dose was identified. There were no dose limiting toxicities. In addition, immunogenicity was also demonstrated. There was a dose dependent. Immunogenicity was shown in both B and T cell responses. There was up to a tenfold increase in the percentage of class one restricted antigen specific CD8 responses. And there was up to a seven-fold increase in the percentage of ASPH-specific B cell responses. There was also a corresponding increase in the anti-ASPH antibody titers, which correlated with B cell responses and subsequent reduction in serum-based ASPH. The clinical findings were also favorable in that SNS301 treatment led to favorable changes in the PSA kinetics. So although the study is a small study, what it shows is there's a favorable clinical response based on serum markers, and it also shows enhancement of both B cell and T cell immunity. I'd like to finish up today by summarizing a few key points from my talk. First, reproducible and safe intradermal vaccination of the DC and the bacteriophage vaccine was shown to be feasible. The biomarker results from these two phase one studies indicate that intradermal vaccination can enhance CD8, CD4, and B cell responses. Specifically, the Mayo Clinic showed an increase in CD8 response, and the Sensei study showed an increase in CD8, TH1, and B cell responses. Both Mayo and Sensei are performing additional studies in order to determine the efficacy of their cancer vaccines, and these additional studies will be will be conducted using Condeva's HMTS device. I'd like to thank everyone for their attention and I conclude my presentation.